Good morning. Morning. Now, before we get really started, uh, I'm going to try to adjust the mic. <laughs> oh, boy. Now, uh, is this a good volume? I think I can turn it a little bit louder. Um, we good? All right. Acoustic camp and things like that. So it's not new to me necessarily, but parking lot's a little bit different, you know? Um, I know some of us have good memories of this. Uh, some of us have bad memories of this. But all of us can appreciate it's still an opportunity. We're still all together. We're still here able to spend time worshiping God. And that's something to be thankful for no matter what our circumstances. Um, um, I think some of our key talking points. Uh, what billionaire celebrity is doing, whatever billionaire celebrity thing billionaire celebrities are doing. Uh, um, the right? physical wealth is, and money, houses, boats, whatever resources, stocks, whatever you want to call it. We understand physical money. We even understand how to get it. We understand sometimes you work for your money. And that's the majority of us, I, I truly believe. Sometimes you get lucky. And you fall into money. Maybe you inherit something. Maybe you win the lottery. Who knows? Sometimes you fall into your money. I think the only other way to get money is crime, and hopefully that's not any of us. So we understand money. We understand physical wealth. But the Bible also speaks at great length to spiritual wealth. And I think also, in a crowd like this, the majority of us also know like what spiritual wealth is. We understand the concept that God has offered us the forgiveness of our sins. Because we have that forgiveness of sins, we have a home in heaven waiting for us. And that is this spiritual wealth, the spiritual tre treasure that has been granted. And yes, we keep God's commands, we do as God tells us, we are baptized into him, and we receive this spiritual wealth. We live lives that continue to follow him, and we gain that spiritual wealth. And so, I think we get all of these things. Um, and it's interesting, this connection between uh, physical wealth and spiritual wealth. Um, if you look at uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, uh, verses 6 through 11, we see Paul, and Paul gets his opinion on the, the connection between spiritual wealth. It's actually a means of bringing one rich, fall into temptation and a snare, and many foolish and harmful desires and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all sorts of evil, and some, by longing for it, have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. But flee from these things, you man of God, and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, perseverance, and gentleness. So we see Paul's opinion. Clearly, spiritual treasure is far greater than physical treasure. Physical treasure lasts forever. Physical treasures, it's a gateway into sin. It's a gateway into temptation at least. So we see this. And again, in a crowd like we have today, I'd argue most of us understand that. So what I'd like to focus on for the next bit is why, why, why do we not actually intellectually accept that so often? Why is it that even though we intellectually understand the value of spiritual wealth and, and the lesser value of physical wealth, why is it that we can't quite accept it? Um, why is spiritual wealth worth so much more than physical wealth? That's what I'm focusing on this morning. And really, Jesus gives us the answer. This morning, we're going to be in Luke chapter 12. Luke is going to start. Specifically, we're going to be looking at verses uh, verse, uh, 13 through 34. The longer passage, but we see lots of insight into what has true value. Because what we will quickly find is, Jesus tells us, spiritual wealth is of far greater value than physical wealth. So turn with me. Turn with me to Luke chapter 12, and we'll get started. Um, starting with verses 13, 14, and 15. Some of his possessions. So, first little tidbit Jesus gives us is, well, spiritual wealth is far greater than physical wealth, because life is more than just possessions. Uh, we see, uh, beware, be on your guard. Every form of greed, for not even when one has an abundance does his life consist of possessions. Well, what are we thinking here? Life is more than wealth. That's the first thing we see. Um, and again, I think we understand that. 
if you spend your entire life pursuing this idea of excessive wealth, this, ex this idea of having more than you need, you're going to miss out on a lot of stuff in just your life. Um, think about the things in life which are free. Your friends and your family. You don't own your friends and your family, but you get to enjoy your friends and your family. It doesn't take an excessive amount of wealth to have friends. But you enjoy your friends. You don't own them. You, you enjoy them. You enjoy your company. Uh, you enjoy adventure, activities. You enjoy things and doing things with the people that you love. All of these things don't cost a lot of money. It's the things of life that give life meaning that don't require excessive amounts of wealth. I would argue joy and laughter also fall into this category. These emotions that we have, these emotions that ha make life worth make life worth living. You don't need the money. You don't need excessive wealth in order to make these things happen. And so why is it that so often people spend their whole lives in pursuit of all this wealth and miss out on life? You spend so much time just working and toiling and spinning your thumbs, trying to make more and more money, missing out on really important. And then at the end of everything, what? You have a lot of wealth, and that's all. You don't have friends and family. You don't have experiences. You don't have the things that make life worth living. Because you're spending all your time seeking wealth. Uh, don't chase wealth to the point that you're missing out on everything else. Don't abandon your family for the sake of a greater paycheck. Don't abandon joy. Don't abandon the fun of life, all for the sake of wealth. Uh, spiritual treasure is worth more than physical treasure, because more times than not, the pursuit of physical treasure is going to make you miss out on the things of this life that actually make this life worth living. That's the very first thing you see pointed out here. As we continue uh, looking in verses 16 through 21, uh, Jesus gives this parable, and he continues this thought. So let's read. First, and Jesus told them a parable, saying, the land of a rich man was very productive. And he began to reason himself, saying, What shall I do, since I have no place to store my crops? Then he said, This is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns, and I will build even larger ones. And there I will store all of my grain and all of my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, what you have done is good. And you have many goods laid up for you many years to come. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to this man, you fool, this very night your soul is required of you. Who will own what you have prepared? So, uh, spiritual wealth is worth more than physical wealth, because physical wealth ends when your life ends. That's the moral of the parable. When you have all that physical wealth, all of that riches that you've accrued, it goes with you. You know, you might die with a million dollars. Good. When you die, that million dollars is lost. You might die in debt. You might die in deep debt, but that debt doesn't follow you into death either. The things of this life, especially the possessions and the physical things of this life, they don't follow us. They're gone. They're here for a moment and gone for eternity. And so, in contrast to this, we have to be rich toward God. Again, spiritual wealth. This is second more important kind of wealth. Um, I think, so in, age, in ancient Egypt, there's this concept where the pharaohs, when they die, they would mummify themselves. Then they would gather up all of the riches of their kingdom and bury it with them. They might bury canoes, houses, food, clothes. They would kill their servants and have the servants there with them to serve them in the afterlife. All because they feared this concept, this idea that when I die, I don't get anything left. When I die, everything's gone. That's what they feared. And this is ludicrous. That's not how this works. They, they didn't have it right. When we die, that's it. When we die, what we have in this world, it's gone. We don't get it anymore. It goes to somebody else. So what we find is, why, why, why spend all of our time, all of our extra time especially, trying to accrue this wealth, trying to accrue all these physical things that are temporary? You might live 10 years with your millions of dollars, and then what? It's gone. And then you got eternity without. You might die the next day. You don't get to enjoy the spoils of your life. 
And that by spiritual wealth is far more worthwhile than physical wealth. Because physical wealth ends when life ends. That's what we see in this passage. Let's continue reading. Uh, verses 22 and 3. And Jesus said to his disciples, For this reason I say to you, do not worry about your life as to what you will eat, nor what, you, nor for your body as to what you will put on. For life is more than food, and the body is more than clothing. All right. The spiritual wealth is worth more than physical wealth because your soul is beyond the needs of food and clothes. Kind of similar to our last point, but maybe looked at it from the other perspective. Um, well, first of all, notice there's a slight change of context. For this, in what we had just read, Jesus has been talking about this idea of great physical wealth, this idea of having more than we need, of having an abundance. But now he's, he's shifts. It's no longer talking about the abundance, but talking about the need, the necessities of life. And we understand that, right? We understand that there are things we need in this life. We have to have food. We have to have shelter. We have to have clothes and water. So those are the essentials. It's not wealth that's essential. And then there's also wealth. There's all the things beyond that. And we understand that's what makes life comfortable, what makes life easy. So we, we get that distinction, right? There's a difference between what we have to have and what we and so Jesus makes that sort of shift here. Jesus is now talking about what we have to have and no longer the riches that go beyond what we have to have. And so his teaching is, don't worry about your physical needs because your soul is beyond those physical needs. Um, I think we also need to point out this idea of worry. The word worry here is to give undue concern. To give undue concern. So automatically that implies a little bit of concern is necessary, right? Don't give more concern than it's needed. But, you know, you, you have to have food. You have to live. So that's not saying forgo everything. It's saying don't give an extra amount of worry. Don't have anxiety for these things. But you still have to do the stuff you have to do just in order to live. So, in all of this, for this reason, because of the physical stuff, because of the food and clothes, doesn't matter once our that doesn't matter once our body dies. Our soul does not require the food and clothes that our body requires. So when we die, the food and the clothes and the shelter, well, we no longer have need for that. By the same principles that we don't need the excessive wealth, well, when we die, it's gone. Um, there's an old adage that says something like, when the body dies, the cancer dies with it. The things of this world even if it's the things of this world cause to die, all those problems are behind us. All the toiling, all the pain, all of that, it's gone. The things of our body, the things that we need, that's gone in the next life. Spiritual wealth is worth so much more than physical wealth because we don't need the physical things at all once we enter into the next life. Our souls are beyond that. And so when many of us, although many of us aren't just chasing wealth, Many of us are just trying to get by. That's fine. That's good. That's something that we have to do. We have to have certain things to live. What we're being called to do here is to recognize the order of priorities still. It doesn't matter what should it like. Because in this next life, the spiritual wealth kicks in. In this next life, the spiritual wealth is what gives us purpose and meaning. Don't be so concerned about the things of this world that we leave behind the things of the next world. Spiritual wealth is superior to the physical needs of this life because the soul lasts forever. This life only lasts for a little bit. Let's keep reading. Uh, verses 24 to 31. Verses 24 to 31. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap. They have no storeroom nor barn, yet God feeds them. How much more valuable are you than the birds? And which of you by worrying can worry and add a single hour to his lifespan? If then you cannot even do the little things, why worry about the other matters? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, but I tell you, not even Solomon in all of his glory clothes himself like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass in the field, what is alive today and tomorrow thrown into the furnace, how much more will he clothe you, you men of little faith? 
And do not seek what you will eat and what you will drink, and do not keep worrying. For all of these things the nations of the world eagerly seek. But your Father knows that you need that you need these things. Seek his kingdom, and these things will be added to you. Spiritual wealth is more important than physical wealth, because God's going to provide our basic needs. We've got examples here. We've got the example of the raven and the example of the flower. There's subtle differences here, but the gist is the flower and the raven are taken care of. You know, flowers don't coil, and they don't spin. They aren't out there doing their best to gain excess and to do more than they have to. They're taken care of. They're going to die eventually. They're going to be thrown into the furnace. But as they're alive, they're taken care of. And the same with the ravens. The ravens aren't building barns full of food for their winters. They're looking for food, and they're provided for. And so then we get two hypothetical questions. Uh, verses 25 and 28, kind of the same thing. Uh, you can by worrying you can add a single to your lifespan. Um, these little things. Uh, if God so takes care of the raven and so takes care of the flower, is he not going to take care of you? It's rhetorical. Yes. Yes. God cares more for me and God cares more for you than he does about these plants. God takes care of us more so than he takes care of these plants. God provides both what they need to survive, and God will provide us with what we need. Uh, and that's the point. Don't become so preoccupied with gaining worldly wealth that God's going... Don't become so preoccupied with these things because God is going to provide us with what we need. Now, there's a balance here, right? Because there is a difference between what we need and what we want. There's a big difference between what we want for comfort, what we need for comfort, and what we need to survive. Um, so often, I think, especially in America as we live, there's this idea that we have to have a lot of house. We have to have meat with every meal. We have to have all of these things for comfort. And we, those are needs. Not really the case. What do we need to live in this life? We need shelter. We need food. We need clothes. But you can survive on beans and rice. You can survive in a one-bedroom apartment, even if there's a couple of you. You're going to have the shelter you need to live. God doesn't promise comfort. God promises necessity. And so I think there's a couple of ideas that go along with it. Be content with what you have, because what you have is enough. Paul talks about that in the first Timothy passage. Paul talks about that in Philippians. The idea of um, as for me, I am content with and I have been content with much and I have been content with little. Being content is a necessity in the Christian lifestyle, whether we have a lot, whether we have a little. Um, allow God to strengthen you. Don't rely on worldly possessions to be your strength. Second, we need to be thankful for what we got. I recognize, and hopefully you recognize, very, very few of us, if any, are living in that one-bedroom apartment with rice and beans for every meal. We're blessed. We have more than the necessity. Um, I think we need to be thankful for what we have. Because most of us do have more than the necessity. And third, I think we need to be ready to help those in need. If there are people in this crowd that are in need, that are struggling to find those necessities, there's a good group of us, and we need to be able to help one another. The church is one of those means by which God provides for those who are in need. If there are people in need, step up, help. If you are in need, ask for help. We're here for you. That's part of what's going on here. God will provide for your needs. Allow him to. Trust him to. Spiritual wealth is superior to physical wealth because God will give us what we need. And finally, we get to the end of 32 and 33. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your Father has chosen gladly to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions. Give to charity. Make yourself money belts which will not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven, where, the thief, where no thief comes and no moth destroys. Finally, Spiritual wealth is greater than physical wealth because spiritual wealth never fades away. We say God provides for us, and it's true. He provides for us in many ways, and the greatest way he provides for us is that spiritual treasure. We already talked about what, that make, what that's made up of. We talked about how the spiritual treasure, spiritual treasure, the spiritual wealth, is made up of the forgiveness of sin, the promise of heaven, the church that supports us. We have these spiritual gifts, these spiritual 
spiritual treasure, the spiritual wealth that he's given us freely. Uh, don't look down on that. The spiritual free, spiritual wealth is given to all who seek his kingdom, which also means on our part, we need to be seeking the kingdom, right? There's a requirement on our part. It's not a gift given to all men, no matter what. Our, our responsibility in here is to seek his kingdom. It's to do his command. We have to actively take a take action to seek his kingdom. It's not something we get freely, necessarily, but once we seek the kingdom, once we take those steps, it's what is given to us. And so what's the nature of what's given to us? Well, spiritual wealth is undying. It's unfailing. It does not wear out. The physical wealth dies. The spiritual gift, the spiritual wealth, sorry, the spiritual wealth does not. Um, it's not going to rot like physical wealth. I mean, Think about our physical wealth, especially now. We're dealing with inflation. We're dealing with taxes. We're dealing with uh, different forms of theft. We understand that. Physical wealth is temporary. It's going to rot. Second of all, physical wealth is stolen. We understand that as well. Inflation, taxes, if you will. The physical wealth that we have, even what we accrue, is not going to last. Spiritual wealth is. Spiritual wealth lasts for eternity. And so why would you invest in something that is temporary when you know it's temporary? Uh, why would you invest in something that you know doesn't have value? Would you go out right now and invest in landline telephones? Are landline telephones to come back and make you a, a return on your investment in the future? No. It's a foregone conclusion. It's a past technology that's not going to make you a return. Why invest in something that's not worth it? And you can say the same thing about any form of physical wealth, because we have this perfect investment waiting for us, the spiritual wealth. Invest in that. Take your time, take your effort, take your opportunities, invest towards spiritual wealth, because that is what's going to give us the greatest return. Um, spend your time in church. Spend your money in church. Spend your allotted abilities doing the Lord's will. Don't spend all of your time accruing extra money. Bigger houses, more cars. That's what's being caught here. Spiritual wealth is superior to physical wealth because spiritual wealth never ends, never ends. So in all of this, we've got, what, five reasons, five arguments as to why spiritual wealth is so much more valuable than physical wealth. Physical wealth doesn't automatically make your life better. Physical wealth goes Physical wealth Provide for our basic needs. Anyway, why give away trying to gain more? And the spiritual wealth that we accrue never fades away. We have so many reasons why we should be valuing what is spiritual, the spiritual wealth that God gives us all, so much more than the physical. Verse 34 really sums up everything for us. For where your treasure is, there your heart is also. So as we fall, as we sort of end this final thought, where is your heart? Is your heart with the things of this world? Is only to gain the that can last? Well, if that's where your heart is, I mean, so be it. You're going to gain something from it, but it's not going to last. And if you're spending all of your time trying to gain this physical wealth, you're not spending all of your time gaining physical or spiritual wealth. Uh, now, you can do a little bit of both, and I, I would argue we are called to do a little bit of both. We can't just sit around, do nothing, and expect to get the things we need in this life. God might provide, but we have to do something about that. We can't be lazy. We can't be these uh, lazy gluttons sitting around doing nothing. But, and then the other is true. If your heart is with the spiritual wealth, that's what you focus on. That's what you gain, and you gain what is permanent. So what are you focused on? Value Value what is spiritual. Value the spiritual wealth that God has promised and God freely gives to all who seek it. Make sure that above all else, you're right with God and that you're standing with him. So as we close this morning, it's an interesting time. Uh, we still have the Baptist to set up. If any of you need to be right with God, if any of you need to start by accepting the gift that God freely gives each and every one of us, we still have that opportunity. We can still go on back inside. That's still an opportunity for each and every one of you that has that need of that those physical needs those needs that you have to have provided well we're here for you as well 
Maybe some of you have spiritual needs, and you need to get back on track. Striving for what is spiritual. Striving for what is more important. Well, we're here for you as well. Uh, there's good people here. There's ministers. There's elders. There's, there's other members here that are willing to have Focus on what is most important. Spiritual wealth is so Let go of the worry and the anxiety and the greed that leads you to pursue the physical instead. Um, if you have any needs, any way that we can help you, now's your opportunity. Please come now as we stand and as we sing.